Hello my friends and uh, welcome. Today I want to show you about um, OpenStreet, how you can use OpenStreetMap, how I use OpenStreetMap, how others use OpenStreetMap, the benefits of OpenStreetMap. And um, I first want to start here about my area. As you can see here, this is a map and it says here you are here. That's basically where I am. And uh, this is a transient of a friend of mine. I'm actually not living in a transient, I'm a friend, so I'm actually living in an apartment here. And, uh, but he also has a transient. And I made this for the guests of the transient. Uh, so this map is completely made from OpenStreetMap. And um, I edited it for the guest. Uh, so they can clearly see here is St. Patrick NPC line, and it goes to here. This is the turning point, so it drops off the people here, then it goes back, and here it picks up the new people going back to the city. And this is basically the line here. You can see how it goes to Korean Highway, and then it goes to the city. Uh, you also see the, the other jeeps. Here is another turning point, the San Carlos Heights turning point. You can see if uh, you go up the hill here, there's another San Carlos Heights extension turning point. This is the Cassin Hill extension terminal. Uh, the outroad road shed, that's very important because you can walk from here down, it, it's only going down to the outroad road shed, there's many jeeps here. Um, so here's a few to go to Lamtan, Mavril, Savlan, there's actually a lot more but I didn't map all of them yet. Uh, you can see the Iris and Eco Park, which is interesting for tourists, of course. Then I added some stuff like here's a hairdresser, laundry shops, uh, there's a pharmacy, here's the Iris and Health Center, um, the new Iris and Barangay Hall. It's, it's not yet ready, but I already added it to the map. Um, here's a parking place, here's a parking place. Uh, this is roadside parking, so it's also meant as roadside parking. This is paid parking. Uh, all the other places you're not allowed to park on the road, uh, regardless of the fact that people do that, of course, but the map should uh, be clear, indicative, and inform people where are the legal parking places and where not. And, um, yeah, so this is basically how you can make your own map for your own needs, if, if you have a transient or a hotel and you want your guests to have something special, you want to offer them something more like everyone else is doing, but you want to give them special, that they feel also oh, something special is done for us. You can make such a map like that from OpenStreetMap. And, um, uh, yeah, and you close this at that point. Um, the next step is the basic map. So I just show you what you can do with the map for yourself if you have a transient, for instance. Um, this is the basic map, what you're looking at, about um, my area, surrounding area. So what have I done here so far? And this is stuff you don't find on any other map, also not on Google. Um, I will get to that later, because Google is sometimes completely wrong. Actually, mostly it's wrong. Um, you can go, for example, here the, the Eco Park, you can actually go so much into detail that you say there's a path here, there's a path here, here is the view deck, here is a shelter, here is a shelter, here is a picnic area. Um, that's how detailed you can get. Another place which I want to show you how detailed you can get is here, around the Lourdes Grotto. You can add every single footway, every path going around. Um, you can also enter this information here, so this is trees, tree covered area, this is rocky area. Uh, this area around it, it hasn't been defined because that's really a lot of work to every single area to define it exactly. It's, it's an impossible task for one person really. Uh, and right now, besides me, there's only one other guy here in Bagu doing this. So I'm hoping, therefore, I'm making these videos. I'm hoping to get people interested to join us. Um, this is an example how very detailed mapping can work. So I added here the uh, information plugs. 
with information about uh, the tourist site, about uh, the Rizal monument. Every single trees, tree here, it's mapped independently. Uh, the fountain, this is a memorial for the um, COVID-19 fr frontliners. Uh, so all of that, very detailed, you can map that, you can map the steps. So the steps are here where the, where the line is a bit thicker, and where it's thinner, that's then just a path. It cannot be a path or a footway. Um, as you can see here, you have the road, but next to the road you have the footway, the sidewalk, and all of that you can map, so you can actually show on the map where is there actually a sidewalk, and where isn't. Um, I'll get later to navigation, but navigators, they actually use that. So you have navigators not just for the car, you also have navigators for uh, walking, for hiking, for cycling, and they use all of this information. So it's really important for a map to know that. Um, again, skip Google, they don't know that. Uh, this is about a um, overpass. You have an overpass here. The, the big overpass here at Harrison Road. This here is between the Central School and the Public City Hall. Uh, again, the navigation software uses this information. You can also add the information if there's a crossing for persons with disabilities or not. Uh, you can adapt navigation software for blind people, for people with disability. They can actually modify that. So if they have an earphone in their ear, the navigator tells them um, 200 meters ahead there's a crossing for persons with disabilities. Right now they have to learn all of that per head, which is great, they should, but you can get assisted information for such people by adding this information to the map. And um, yeah, that all of this information is available on the map. Um, then I'm going back to my area again. As you can see, I added here a lot of addresses. The more you zoom in, the more house numbers you see. That's a daunting task. I will get to that again later. Um, another area I mapped very intensively, actually I think it's completed by now, is here, it's called Barrio Barangay. So here, every house number I mapped, Everything that's there, the, the Barangay Hall, um, a water tank, the health center, the church, again a little mini park, police station, uh, eateries, um, here's a local dentist, parking areas, uh, it's really most of that is mapped. And then here you have Camp John Hay. This is the pine forest with all the trails available. It's not done 100%, but I would say 95% is done. You can see it's very detailed. Every path you can walk is mapped. Um, yeah, this is basically the, then the main map, and it's so much information. I'm going to stop at this point. I can add so much more information in this video, what, what you can see on the map, but I'm going to stop here. What I'm going to show you now is it's all about rendering. There's a lot more information than what's actually represented on the map. And for example, if we switch here to the Ö, and v karte that's from the Germans. Ö stands for Öffentliche, Öffentliche Personennahverkehrskarte. Uh, that's a lot of uh, German, basically for saying public transportation card. Um, we can select that as well. And now you see suddenly all these red lines. Well, these are the Jeep lines I added in Barrio. I've, I've been very busy at that, um, trying to get all the Jeep lines on the map. And um, um, I have here also the information. I got this from the city engineer's office. This is uh, the future planning. It's for uh, 2024. So I already have this information, but it's a huge staple of, of information. It's too much. Again, it's too much for one person to do all of that, and the hiking trails, and the addresses, boundaries, all the amenities, shops, the jeep lines. As you can imagine, you need a lot of contributors to get all of that on the map. That's why I'm making these videos. I'm hoping to get people interested to join me. Um, but anyway, 
these jeep lines as you can see if you zoom in you actually see here now more information coming this goes to long long this goes to kisat uh, this goes to asin hot springs asin road and mangali sun uh, this is lourdes dominican city camp quarry um, yeah i cannot zoom in much further but all of these white dots here okay the internet is slow Okay, now let's zoom out and just, I cannot zoom in much further, go slow into them. But all these dots here, which you can see in this area, which you can see in this area, those are the staging areas, also here. So every one of them is a jeep line which goes either to Scout Barrio or it goes to um, Sablan or it goes to Tam Avan, where also is the, the Stone Kingdom, which is also mapped completely accurate. Um, here is the jeep lines that go to the east of Baguio, to Itugon, uh, Bukab, etc. Here, here is the staging area which goes to the Latrinidad area. Um, there's more jeep staging areas here. They go then towards uh, La Union, uh, Rosario, etc. If you want to go there, you take these ones. And as you can see, they're, they're all mapped. Not all, but a lot of that is mapped already. So when you zoom out, you actually see also the long distance. Actually, to map this, I actually write the Jeep. So I can add every stop. I can add exactly where is the end of the line. So all of this I actually did already. Again, it's a lot of work. It's not so much about the money for the Jeeps, because the Jeeps are really cheap here. But, um, yeah, it, it takes time. And then, of course, we can zoom out a little bit. And you actually see here long distance rides, and this is for bus connections. We also have that here, so you can also use this data from the map to plan your ride to Dagopan, Lengayen. You see exactly how the buses travel. This is for the Victory Liner. I added here the Victory Liner. Uh, another mapper did this one. That's a Victory Liner to Baguio. That's not my work. Again, there are a lot of mappers in the Philippines, thousands actually, but in Baguio it's only me and someone else and uh, we need a lot more mappers obviously um, yeah but this is another another thing to render the data and uh, to present them the public information public transportation to the map and uh, then you have another one that's here the cycle map let's go there and this is basically for cyclists and here you can add where there is where there are specific lanes for cyclists. So if, if you're riding a cycle and you want special roads which are made specifically for you as cyclists, you can add that information. As you can see here, I did this only at the military cutoff thus far. It turns blue. Since I'm actually not riding a bicycle here in Bakio, I didn't add more of that to the map. But uh, yeah, you can actually have a designated lane for cyclists and um, it shows us on the map then um, also routes here which are designated for cyclists or even if it's not designated the navigation software actually uses all the information where it's written that this is only for cars, this is only for pedestrians, this is only for cyclists, or this is for cars and cyclists, but not pedestrians, or this is for pedestrians and cyclists, but not for motorized vehicles. All of this information you put on the map, and the navigation software can use that. Uh, then you have also here the bicycle shops. There's one. There's one. There's a lot more in Baguio, of course. But again, I'm not a cyclist, so I don't add that information normally. Um, so this is a lot of information thus far about what you can do with OpenStreetMap. But hold on to it, there's a lot more. At this point I'm going to close this. And um, yeah, let's go to how companies use OpenStreetMap. So this is from Mercury Drug. Everyone knows the Mercury Drug Store, of course. As you can see here, 
This is also from OpenStreetMap contributors. They tag it as such, and they use this information to actually inform you where are their shops. Um, as you know, most shops, they still use Google. It's everywhere, even official companies, they still use Google. The thing is, to use Google to show where you are, I mean, even the even the Bank of the Philippine Islands uses Google, actually, but they don't have a license, and that, that's an issue, because if, if you want to use it, you actually have to use a license to use it, if you use it commercially, and you are using it commercially, if you use it to direct customers to where your locations are. And the thing with licensing in Google is, if, if your volume of the website is relatively low, it's for free. But you still need the license, even if, if it's still for free. But as your volume increases, you have to pay for it. They have a, then a license scaling model, where the, the higher the volume, the more you've got to pay. And the thing is also with their terms and conditions, at any time, they can cancel the free condition, and then they tell all these companies, oh, you've got to pay. And um, that's totally legit, and that's why it's risky to rely on such a company, because any time they can choose within a notice of two weeks, or two months, or half a year. But also just tomorrow they can say, well, it was free until now, but we're not going to provide it for free anymore, so you've got to pay for it. And then they got these millions of companies worldwide, or maybe even hundreds of millions, I never counted them, and suddenly all of them have to pay for it. And uh, yeah, that's part of their business model. They did that in the past. That's what corporations do. Um, first, they make the whole world depending on them. And then no one can do without them. And that's when they start to increase prices or what was free before, suddenly they start to charge you for it. Uh, so if you're smart, you do it like the Mercury drugstore here. And they say, well, OpenStreetMap will never charge you. Um, it's made by volunteers, it's contributed by volunteers, it will always remain free, and the licensing itself excludes already that any time in future they might have a fee. It won't happen because the license already prohibits that. Also changing the license into a license which would allow that, even that is prohibited. So it will always be free, it will never change. Anyway, this is then an example about a company, but you find already uh, tens of thousands of companies who are legally using it. Um, then I want to go to Facebook. Everyone knows Facebook, right? Well, most of you probably don't know is that Facebook is using OpenStreetMap. Um, it's really funny when I talk to people. No one heard about OpenStreetMap, but everyone in the Philippines is using Facebook. Well, in Facebook you have this about here, right? And you see this nice map here, and you see it in an address. When you click on the eye, you actually see here open street map. And when you click on the map, then you see this little eye down here, and when you click on it, again you see open street map. So Facebook is using open street map again to not get this risky undertaking. If you rely on Google, you risk that in future they're going to charge you, especially a big company like Facebook. Imagine what they will be charged by Google to use Google. So they won't be doing that. Uh, as you can see, this is from uh, El Cielito Hotel in Barrio. And then another example here of the map. That's from uh, the Orchard Hotel in Baguio. Hill. And then another example here. That's the Bloomfield Hotel. So all of these use here, the map of OpenStreetMap, you have everywhere this little eye. And um, at this point I'm going to stop here. Um, this, is a, this is mostly about um, companies, how they use it. Uh, but it's not just companies, it's also the government. In uh, Europe, governments are already very 
um, very much working with OpenStreetMap, and even they contribute, they, they give databases from the government. So governments in, in the Netherlands, they all the addresses in the Netherlands, all the information which is from the Cadastre, all of that information has been handed over to OpenStreetMap, and uh, oh, we can actually open that. So let's do that, OpenStreetMap. And uh, let's zoom out. I can actually show you that. So the cadastre in the Netherlands revealed all the information to OpenStreetMap. And the beauty of it, if, if you zoom in, for example, to my village, where I'm coming from, which layer do I have here? How oh, is still of the cycle map? Yeah, you see in, in Europe, this is already very extended. You see all these cycling routes there on the map. Um, bicycle lanes, and that's of course here in the Netherlands, you have everywhere bicycle lanes. This is in Germany, they, they don't have that many lanes. Uh, this is Belgium, they also don't have that many lanes. But you see all these numbers of the cycling routes, official cycling routes, which are made by uh, tourists, uh, organizations or sometimes even the uh, government is involved by the VVV they call it um, but that's not what I want to show you I want to show you about the addresses so let's zoom in here to the village so here you can see every, every house here along the road is numbered it goes 1, 2, 2, A, 1, A, 2, B, 3, 4, 3, A and this is throughout the whole of the Netherlands. Every single address is on the map. There's not a single house on the map which doesn't have the address because it's now coming straight from the cadaster and goes straight into OpenStreetMap. Every single house which is built new, the moment it gets an address, is going to get on the map. And this is great for the government because the government knows exactly where are the roads, where are the tracks, where are the houses, etc. Uh, again, there's a lot more on the map right now, as what you can see here. Um, electricity grid, uh, drainage system, sewage system, all of that you can add to OpenStreetMap, but this renderer doesn't show all of that. Um, then we close the part of addresses and maps, etc. Um, we went to government, and in this case I want to show you the government also in Baguio. I'm not even sure if everyone in the government knows it. This is our mayor, Mayor Magalon. Uh, personally, I think he's the best mayor in the world, at least from the ones I know. Um, he's very much into digitalizing the city, uh, use the advantage of digitalization for the city. And this is then the Baguio Smart City Center. Uh, from here they can control all the webcams, um, get information about uh, emergency services, etc. I'll get to that also later, but as you can see here, this is again the open street map. So the smart city center of Barrio is using the open street map as well for the smart city center. Here you can see the waterfalls which I added. Um, uh, you can see here the... the differences in green, so some is shrubs, some is forest, some is grassland, some is farmland. And I don't actually know what these red dots represent, but what this is about, what I want to show you is that it's not just the Netherlands government who is now involved in OpenStreetMap, it's also the city of Baguio itself which is using OpenStreetMap already. Again, I'm not sure if all the government officials know that, like Mayor Magalom, he probably doesn't know what map he's looking at. I'm going to assume, but maybe he does know, I don't know that. Um, but uh, the, fa the fact is, everyone is switching to this because it's an open data platform. Open data is the future. It has so many advantages and... Um, yeah, like I told you about emergency services, there have been reports throughout the Philippines, but also in Baguio, about uh, ambulances or other first responders who then get an address where they are needed. 
but they don't know. They don't know where the address is. And this was for about two months ago. I read an article on Facebook, which was uh, released by the Baguio Public Information Office on their Facebook page, that it took first responders over 30 minutes to actually find an address. They were looking for a person in need, a person in, in distress who had an emergency, but they didn't find the address. And this is where OpenStreetMap comes to place. This is the, the Baguio Smart City Center. And they cannot find that address. It's not on the map. Uh, let, let's go to Google, for example. Right? No, let's use maps. Google.com. Because this is very important. This is about life, where every second counts. Yeah, I have no idea why it always starts with Singapore in my area here. Um, yeah, emergencies. That's really about life. People die. If, if you have to wait for an ambulance for half an hour, in half an hour, you're dead. So that's a very bad idea. And um, this is very important why we got more mappers. If, if you look here on Google Maps, you see they just add some houses here. None of the houses has any number. So if someone says, well, it's some house here, well, I, I know this area. I can tell you there's a lot of steps and paths. Uh, the houses, they're crammed together. There's sometimes only just a few centimeters space between the houses, and you have one and the next and the next and the next and the next. It's like a labyrinth. Go find, go find the person who is in need there. Of course, you've got you to gotta search them for half an hour. This, the paths aren't mapped, the steps aren't mapped, the house numbers aren't mapped, it's all not available. Of course people die. And not only that, it's even wrong. Like when you look here, it, this is Saralem Sikap Road, and uh, this is actually Saralem Sikap Main Road, this is Saralem Sikap Road, do I have to check my own map exactly, uh, go back to open street map. I have to check my own mapping what I did here to know what I'm doing. Let's go back to Tokyo. To that area. Yeah, this is Sarin and Sikap Main Road. This is Sarin and Sikap Road 2. This is the official name. As you can see, the road goes exactly like this, and here it stops. From here, it's just a footway connecting to this footway, and this footway connects here to a footway which connects here. Here's a footway which connects to the east, and from here, the footway stops. This is actually a path. So the difference between a footway and a path is that the footway is usually asphalted, not always, I mean, there is some differences between uh, mappers about how they interpret it. But the footway is usually a bit more developed, a bit easier to walk. And the path, it's just ground or gravel or grass. Um, but Google says here, it doesn't stop there. Google says, you can actually drive here through the houses. So if you use the Google Navigator, and you would need to get here as an emergency service, it will tell you to go here, then you go right, then you go here through the houses with your ambulance, and then you go to the right. It doesn't work, because the reality is, the road stops here. And then what? They get out of the car, and they start walking with a brown car, and they start walking here, any of these, these paths, to get to the people here, where they just as well could have used the ambulance, drive all the way down here, then go to the right, and then you actually get there exactly to that place with your ambulance. But Google doesn't know that. And the other issue is naming. So Google claims this is Idugan Village Road. There is no Idugan Village Road here. There is Idugan Village. As you can see, this is Idugan Village. But Google doesn't know this is Idugan Village. It also doesn't know this police village. It also doesn't know anything else really. Um, 
But uh, when you look at OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap actually knows this is Cordillera Road. It's not Idogun Road. It also knows this is Idogun Village. It also knows this is Police Village. It also knows this is St. Patrick's Subdivision. It also knows this is Irishville Subdivision Phase 1. And here is Irishville Subdivision Phase 2. Now, it doesn't show this name on the renderer, but the information is there which says Irishville Subdivision Phase 1 and Phase 2. It used to be NBC. That information is there. So when you look for NBC on an app, it will actually show you that it's this, and NBC is the old name, and this is the new name. But Google doesn't know any of that. So if, if you rely on Google, at least here in the Philippines, you're out of luck for emergencies because all of this information, it's unknown. So obviously the city of Baguio for their smart city center, they have to rely on OpenStreetMap because people like me, we are putting all of this information on the map. We are spending literally years and years, we are busy contributing this data to the map. And um, it's far more accurate. Another example is uh, this area here. I would actually say it's very dangerous in this case. Here you can see on the map, which, which I made, that there's actually a road going down here, and then there's a road going down there, and here it stops. From here it's just steps, and these steps connect here to add road, and from the main add road area here, there's one road going to the right, and then you go here to the end of that road, and it goes to the right, and it goes to the left. Now keep in mind what it looks like here. So the road stops here, the steps connecting to this part of the road, but this part of the road is not the same as that. There's two roads here that go north. Now let's go back to Google. Google also says you can go down here, and then it says this road connects. You see that? There's no steps. It will tell you with your ambulance you can drive down here, which is totally wrong. And then it says it connects here to the, that road, the big road, which goes here to the north. But that's not true. It connects here to a little road, which connects here, and this connection doesn't exist. So this connection is actually uh, steps. This connection doesn't exist because it's actually connected here. So if someone in need is there, and emergency services would rely on Google, they would actually take this turn because it's the navigator might decide this is the fastest way to get there and not drive around here the highway but then you're stuck here because here are steps and again what they then have to do they have to get out of the ambulance and with a brown car going down the steps they are slippery if it's wet to get to someone in need here so you should not rely on that, you should really rely on this map data, because that's more accurate. Um, another example, Google says, if you go north here, you can actually go all the way north, 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 and here you connect to another road, and this one goes then to the, to the main road, the PSHS road, which goes here to the, uh, to the high school which is also a completely wrong map. The high school is not there. Actually, the high school is here, but okay. And here it connects then and goes back to Edogan basketball court. This is, again, completely wrong information. This here, to the basketball court, there is a track here. It's not even a road. There is a track here, but here it stops. The steps here, that's private. You cannot get to the, to the main track. So from these steps, you can go to private homes here and here and here, but you cannot get to the main track. But Google claims this actually goes all the way north, connects here, and this is all a road, so you can drive all of that. And that's total nonsense. This is a path. Here is again a track. Here are steps. You drive there with your ambulance. You're in deep shit. The same here with going back to the south. That's not true. These are steps. 
and this is a track, it's not even asphalted, and this is an industrial area where there's uh, industrial um, corporations. There's no way you can go there with your applet. So it's utter nonsense what Google is doing here. And that's just an example of my area. I know my area very well. I know every single step. I even know the, how many steps there are everywhere and where there are the handrails. We also put that information on the map. Um, so the more reason for everyone, just join the mapping community here in Baguio. Get Baguio on the map. It's literally to save lives. It's so important for the people here in the Baguio Smart City Center. If they have the map here and there is, there is a, a call coming in, a person in distress, a person is wounded, an accident, someone is dying, that when they get the address being told to them, that they can actually, on this map here, which is the same as this, that they can actually say, okay, let's say, uh, 51 Idogan village, right? Idogan village, 51. Hoppa, click, I got it. That's exactly this house. That's where you need to go to. And then they can send the emergency service exactly to that home. That is so important. This is about saving lives. So, this is just another example of how important open street map is becoming. Um, then let's go to the next one, humanitarian open street map. So this is worldwide. This is actually supported by the United Nations. Um, I'm actually not involved in this, but this is uh, about um, when there's typhoons, also in the Philippines. The HOT, the Humanitarian Open Street Map Team, they instantly then help the local communities with information about the local situation, where are landslides, where is flooding, etc. All of this we do as volunteers in the Open Street Map community. Um, but in Baguio, we don't have the people. We need the volunteers in Baguio for that. And um, it's again about emergencies, about people in need. So people, please stop playing games on phones. You can use your phone for mapping, volunteering, put your own barangay, your own purok, or even just only your street, put it on the map, put the house numbers on the map. This is so important, people. Don't skip that. Um, yeah, at that point, then um, let's go back to another thing which involves you personally, and that is couriers. All these companies I showed you, like Mercury Drug, the hotel business, transit business, they use OpenStreetMap already. Facebook uses OpenStreetMap already, but also the famous Apple. Apple Maps uses OpenStreetMap. The Bing from Microsoft, they use OpenStreetMap. These Chinese maps where you see everything in Chinese, they have whole teams dedicated to use OpenStreetMap and translate everything into Chinese, and their whole maps are based on OpenStreetMap. So they also use other information. Uh, so today, actually, they use information from lots of sources, also from other databases. OpenStreetMap is nothing but a database in the end. But the basic is always OpenStreetMap. Not always, but quite often. And more often, as it advances, um, then you have also here, I opened this. Uh, no, that's actually wrong. Um, I wanted to show something else first. Yeah, here we have it. Let's open that with the photo. This is a screenshot of Bookings.com. And uh, bookings.com, everyone knows it, it's about uh, booking your trip worldwide. As you can see here, it says Mapbox. Now, actually, I recognize already that this is the map I edited for OpenStreetMap. And um, remember the map box there. You can close it now. Oops, I opened it twice. This is from mapbox.com. And here you can see that although it says Mapbox, it's actually OpenStreetMap. They just provided different. This is again the terminology rendering. 
OpenStreetMap is just a database. How you render it, if you show public transportation, or if you so, show cycle paths, or if you show trails for hiking, or if you show the, the general map, or if you make a map yourself, what I did for the transition, that is called rendering. Mapbox is just another way to render that information, but it's all OpenStreetMap. So Booking.com is completely relying on OpenStreetMap. Um, another company which we all know, I think, is Grab. So this is Grab. And um, this is about a statement of Grab. That Grab is contributing to OpenStreetMap. Here they explain what they are doing. They have drivers with cameras who do uh, street recording. And then they have a whole whole teams in several locations who added the map of OpenStreetMap, who add data to that. And this is um, this is about uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, which uh, Grab is um, assisting with their Carta View application. And uh, when you scroll at the bottom, uh, here it says Grab will no longer be dependent on paid maps because they are rendering their own map now. Again, rendering, that's something everyone can do that for themselves. Um, but they continue to use OpenStreetMap as its base layer map via the Open Database license. So Grab is using OpenStreetMap and that's their basic. And um, again, I'm going to show here something from Grab. Uh, let's open that again here in the Windows Viewer. So this is from Grab App, the screenshot I made. And um, here you can see choose the, from the map in the bottom. And you can see if I pick my own location, you see this eye again, which you also see in Facebook. Uh, if you click on the eye, you actually see it's open map tiles, open street map contributors. Contributors would be people like me. Open map tiles, it's Again, the rendering of the information from the database. Hey, you see all these addresses. So Grab uses all of that. And again, if you pick a house number 51, for example, you just click on it and Grab knows, oh, that's number 51. So if you click on 78, Grab knows, oh, that's 78. So that's also for your own benefit. Couriers can find you. Uh, Grab can find you, food delivery can find you, JMT can find you, they all use this information to get to you. Well, it's all the more beneficial for every one of us if they don't call us all the time, sir, where are you, sir, where are you, so how do I get there? Put it on the map, even if it's just your own address, put it on the map, you will be found. If you need an emergency, the city can find you. If you need a courier, they can find you. Um, yeah, let's close that. What else? Then we are left with all trails. And then here you can see eight. So these are eight routes I added here around uh, Baguio for hiking. This is the alltrails.com. It's worldwide used by hikers and cyclists for um, routes. And um, oh, let's do this one, Mount Pidawan Ave Maria Shrine. So here you can see again Mapbox, OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap contributors. In the lower right, you see the right attributing. This is all based on these these contributors of the street map and map box and uh, this is a hiking route i added to this service it's free for everyone you can just use it um, it also has a description here take the jeep to Itagon, get off at city of twin river there is the start of this hike and once you get there you can load this in your application on your phone your navigational application and it will tell you Go down the road so many meters, go to the right, go to the left, here take the next exit, there take the next left turn, etc, etc. All of these trails here, I walk them and later I put them on the map. So, all of this information you see here, 
Again, you don't see everything. There's a lot more in the database. But all of this information was added by someone like me. Just a person living somewhere, going around, and put the information on the map. So, this is then the rendering for hiking. And then here at the end, the trail stops at the terminal that goes back to Baguio. And um, here we can zoom out again. And let's zoom in this area a little bit. You can actually see here, here is the water reservoir. Um, here is the water reservoir. Here is the water reservoir. You can see the power lines here in this rendering. And so like I told you, you don't always see all the information. So when you go here, it doesn't show you this information. But here they show you this information, although it's the same database. Uh, names like Toko, Manit. When I walk there, and I see it's not in the map, then I add this information, then I say, okay, here's Toto, Toko, here's Mani. Um, here you have to walk through the river, that's called a fort, which is also with an icon represented on the map. Here's a bridge over the river, a hanging bridge. Here's a hanging bridge. Um, here is a beam bridge with the structure of a beam. Uh, the public parking, these are the resorts. Again, it's a lot of work. That's why we need more people like you who are watching this video to help us contribute. Um, I think I've got most of it, what I wanted to show on the desktop. Then I go now to... to the last thing I wanted to show you. And that's uh, an example of an app. Uh, let's stick with hiking for now, because I was hiking here as well. So these are screenshots I made for my app. The app is called OSM, which stands for OpenStreetMap, and AMD. And this here, here I selected the profile hiking, and then I said I want to walk from Scout Barrio, the turning point, to the Itabon terminal, which goes from back to Barrio. There's an easy trail. Most of it goes down. There's a little bit going up. But as you can see here, you start walking through Camp John Hay. Um, this is a great walk. Here you go through forests and farmlands down to the valley here. Here is uh, mill side. Then you go a little bit up. Again, this forest here, some farmlands. Then you go down again. In this area there's a lot of cows. They walk freely there, so don't be afraid they don't attack you. Here is uh, horses. This is a water basin for flood, uh, flooding. If there's a lot of rain, it will hold the water back here and then slowly it releases it here. Um, from there you walk again a little bit over hills and a little bit down again, and eventually end up in Itogon. Then the next... Uh, why doesn't uh, the work that this. this is a bit zoomed in. Here you can see this uh, Camp John Hay. And here you can see all the trails which I discussed before. All the paths, I mean. And the navigator will tell you go right, go left, go right, go left. Here you exit the forest and you walk a few hundred meters on the street. And then you go down again. Again, the navigator will very accurately tell you how to walk. Uh, this is again a beautiful uh, descent. It has a lot of great views over the mountains. Um, there's some farmlands, there's a lot of uh, beautiful trees there. It's really an amazing walk. And what, what stuns me is that people don't know this. Um, this then the next. As you go down here, you can see you can actually also walk there and there. So you, on all trails, you can actually plot how you want to walk yourself. You walk down, 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 down. Um, uh, then eventually you come here 
at the valley, and then you walk here to the Millside. Um, you you can actually cross the river at some point. That's a little bit south. You can actually cross it, and there's another trail going here with a nice waterfall. And you can walk on top of the waterfall, but you can also go to the bottom of the waterfall. Um, this is then again going south, 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 south from the side, and from here you walk a little bit up. Here's then the cow area. Here's the horses area. That is basically all I want to say about it. Not to spend too much time on it. If most people are not hikers, but if you like hiking, if you like to go for a walk, this is an easy one. If you want to get started with it, this is easy. Most of it goes down. It's not really a big uh, issue for a healthy person. Even if you are already a bit older, as long as you're healthy, this is an easy walk. 13.4 kilometers, so it's not that far. And uh, the elevation, you start at uh, about one and a half kilometer. And the lowest point is, I don't know anymore, eight, 800, maybe 70, 50, something like that. Maybe 700 meters, so it goes goes down most of the time. And um, so this is all on the phone. That was screenshots from the phone using a navigator. Uh, another thing I want to discuss according navigation. Obviously, it also works for cars. <coughs> Wait, I'm drink some coffee. I made for myself and I forgot to drink it. This is then about uh, something new. It's experimental still, it's in development right now. It's about using Jeeps and navigator for Jeeps. So this is the same application as I used for the hiking, which also has a car profile, obviously. And in this case, you can see on the upper left, I chose the public transportation profile. And uh, here you can see, actually, it tells me to walk here. Walk, 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 walk. Walk, 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 walk. And then at this Jeep point, you can get on the Jeep. Uh, I forgot already. Ah, CTO Hydro. I asked the application, plan me a route. How do I get from home to CTO Hydro? So this is the start where it tells me then here, hop on the Jeep which comes from Sablan. Why Sablan? Uh, as you can see at the time, I recorded this at 4.17 in the morning, and all of these Jeeps, they don't ride that early, the ones I mapped. And I also added actually the information already from when, what time in the morning to what time in the evening does the Jeep actually operate. Uh, for all the Jeeps, I actually added that information, but the Jeep from Sablan I forgot to add that information. I didn't do that yet. So here, it's, it assumes the Jeep from Sablan is 24-7 around the clock. That's why it's telling me to go to that one and use that one and skip the other ones because they are not operating this early. Um, as you can see, the routing itself, it's, it's not, not right actually because actually how you should be walking is just down the steps here. Then you walk here the ad road and you're already at the Jeep station. Uh, but again, this is experimental. Uh, next video. Here you can see it gives you one route, it gives you an alternative route. You can use the Sablan then Asi, you can use Sablan then uh, Nangarisan. But then you gotta walk when you exit at the Nangarisan stop. You gotta walk again. When you stop at the Asin Jeep, the last station, you gotta walk only 10 minutes. Well, the thing is, this one stops directly at Citro Hydro. So you have to walk like 30 seconds actually. This one stops a little bit far from it, but the actual walk time is, I don't know, 15 minutes. Also the one hour here and one hour there is actually more like 20 minutes. And um, the reason is very simple. In this profile here for public transportation, I entered the data that I walk only one kilometer an hour, which I also entered in this profile and this. The reason I did that is because I do mapping. 
When I do nothing, I'm mostly standing still. Everything I see, I make a picture, or I write a note on the phone, which means I'm actually not moving. So my average is very low. That's why I told the application, when, when there's walking involved, assume I only go one kilometer an hour. So you can basically deduct from that, that the distance here is one kilometer, the distance here is one kilometer, the distance here is just over a kilometer. That's why the times are very high. Um, but that aside, but you can see here, it shows you alternative routes. It doesn't know the other jeep lines because they're not operating that early in the morning. Um, here I change the routing. I say, okay, I don't want to go to City Hydro. Let's go to 1300 level. You can see when you enter in the search panel here, 1300 level, it shows you the swimming pool as a neighborhood. It shows you the public transportation stop. Um, it also shows you some other areas and here you got hits, just as with Google, the best hit is on top, which is this one, but the ones below, if they have something similar, like level, 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 it's a bad hit, but it's still a hit. So the worse the hits get, the lower, the lower in the application it's shown, like any search engine. Then, if I do that, if I change it, it gives me this warning here that public transportation is currently in beta testing, expect errors and inaccuracies. Well, that's how it is, it's currently in, in development. Uh, but I just want to show you this is what's going to be in the future. We're working on that, both we as mappers as well as the application developers. So we are trying to put public transportation on the map. And the developers are trying to program the application that it can use this information. And here you see that once it has found this, you can see that it tells you, you walk again to the Sablan uh, line. Again, the others are not operating yet. And then you have a walk of 24 minutes. Again, it's actually just a few minutes. To the Itagon terminal, which is about here. And then you take the Jeep to Itagon. And uh, this is zoomed in at the city center. So what it actually told you, and the navigator will tell you that even if you're riding the Jeep, if you come in, in the vicinity of where you have to get out, it will tell you, next stop, get out, then you get out, and then it will tell you, walk here, take the crossing over the street, uh, walk down the, along the police station, walk down uh, the street, uh, past the Malika complex, here you cross using the footbridge, then you walk all the way here to the staging area, of the jeeps and there you take the terminal to Itogon. All of that the navigational app will give you this information. So if if you know your road that's great. But if you're a tourist, you don't know, right? And sometimes it's extremely hard getting a taxi. Like so often I was hiking somewhere and I ended up in Tuba, Sablan, Itogon, and it, there's no taxi. And then I started to walk the road, I walk, 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 and there's never a taxi. Well, the beautiful thing is, there are everywhere jeeps in the Philippines, and maybe not on your road, but then it's somewhere very close. You're never far away from a jeep road, honestly. So this is beautiful if you get public transportation on the map. And... Um, yeah, that, that's why we need people like you. We need people for emergency services, for yourself, for couriers, for companies. <coughs> Everyone needs it. And like I said, it's also for your own benefit, really. It's also a great hobby. Go out. Don't sit at home. Go out. Go for a walk. It's healthy. It's good for your heart. It's good for your lungs. Go out. Go walking. Record that information, write down notes, you can upload notes, even if you don't want to map yourself, upload those notes, make photos with card of you, that's an application, I will show them in another video. You can make whole recordings of streets, the same as what Grab is doing, it's, it's uh, open source, it's publicly available. Yeah, I think I showed enough now about uh, OpenStreetMap. 
about its use for uh, people, for personal people, for couriers, for the city, for companies. And uh, at this point I want to conclude it because I want to keep it under an, an hour. And I just want to tell you all, happy mapping. Really, go out, do something useful, be healthy, go for a walk. Just do that and join the group. Thank you.